Let's give YouTube some credit. They've done some really good updates recently. The best one obviously being thumbnail A-B testing, otherwise known as test and compare. So you can understand my palpable excitement when I saw this new video from the Creator Insider YouTube team. But as you may have already figured out from the title of this video, things didn't go as I, or many of you, would have hoped. Let's talk about shorts. We've read your comments and questions about custom thumbs. Yes, I'm glad you have. When are you going to release it? We don't have plans to launch them this year. What? We'll keep you posted if that changes. The reason? The majority of shorts views and watch time comes from the shorts feed where thumbnails aren't displayed. Yeah, let's talk about that, shall we? Because if we go to our analytics and the one and a half million monthly views we get from shorts, less than 13% of them come from the shorts feed. And more than half of our views come from YouTube search. And that is a place on YouTube where viewers definitely do see the thumbnail and likely make a judgment call on whether to watch a short based on the title and the thumbnail. And you know what happens to search-based content on YouTube, right? It goes evergreen, meaning you can get hundreds of views per hour, 426 days after it's published even when it is a YouTube short. So naturally, I open up this question to you at this point. Are you getting most of your YouTube shorts views from a source other than the shorts feed? And that does remind me, side note, I did read the comments from the last video featuring this background and made changes based on your recommendations. What do you think? New color, new lighting. Feedback appreciated. Now, let's be honest, I don't imagine too many creators get most of their views from a source other than the shorts feed. VidIQ's data might be a rare occurrence. Our channel might be an edge case. But since the YouTube platform has this long-standing reputation as being the internet's unofficial video search engine, we treated YouTube shorts in the same manner, and we've benefited from 12 million views. Impressive in one sense, yes, but in another sense, 12 million views barely touches the monetization requirements if we could do that in three months, which we never would be able to do. So I will admit our influence on whether or not YouTube Shorts should have custom thumbnails is barely a ripple in the YouTube Shorts ocean. But there's always an easy way to democratize this question, right? A YouTube poll. Well, that seems pretty conclusive, doesn't it? Creators want custom thumbnails for Shorts. And I'm actually surprised at how many people care about this. But is this a self-fulfilling question? If I ask you, do you want more stuff? The answer's obviously gonna be yes. And maybe we don't know what's good for us. Maybe such a decision is better left to the governing body of the platform. For now, we'd encourage you to focus on engaging videos versus optimizing thumbnails. But what if there is a creator out there who's leading the charge for custom YouTube Shorts thumbnails, who just so happens to be the largest channel and the most recognizable face on YouTube. For the record, go. As you can see, I'm trying to break the world record for the most bottles smashed on my head. Now this is classic Mr. Beast, right? Including the thumbnail. However, this angle is never seen in the short and Mr. Beast is wearing a different colored hoodie. This thumbnail is not a part of a short. It is a custom thumbnail. So what's going on? Well, there can be only two explanations. Either Mr. Beast has exclusive access to a custom YouTube Shorts tool that he's been using for years that nobody else has access to, in which case, shame on you, YouTube, for giving Mr. Beast an unfair advantage he doesn't need. Or Mr. Beast is using the Shorts custom thumbnail hack. This is a very clunky solution which involves creating your thumbnail and then adding it to the start or the end of your video then uploading that video through the YouTube mobile app so that you can select a frame from the short as the custom thumbnail. Then going into the video editor in the desktop version of the YouTube studio to trim out the thumbnail image, leaving you with the thumbnail, but no trace of it in the video itself. Whew. That's a lot of effort, but it does give you the desired result when somebody is searching for content and finds your intentionally designed thumbnail up against a blurry face from a random video frame. Now, I don't create hacked custom thumbnails for all of our YouTube shorts. And when I do, I keep them very basic, spending no more than 15 minutes on them. But anecdotally, they do seem to perform better. But it may also be the case that the short performed better because it was a better idea in the first place, so I was willing to spend more time on it, including making a custom thumbnail. Again, it is hard to draw big conclusions from what we here at vidIQ are doing. But we should all pay attention to what Mr. Beast is doing, and he's making custom thumbnails for his YouTube shorts. So come on, YouTube. 
how hard would it be? I don't think anybody is asking for anything as complex as AB thumbnail testing for our YouTube shorts. It would just be nice to upload a thumbnail if we chose to do so.